The whole idea behind this vlog is about mentoring. In the past, you would graduate beauty school, you'd go get a job working in a salon, and then the owner or the education director or artistic director or someone would mentor you and train you on what skills that you were required to have. Not only just technical skills, but also personal skills, how to talk to a client, how to consult, how to blow dry hair, how to cut hair, how to color, all the things that you were required to do to be successful behind the chair, they would teach you. They had a vested interest in your success because when you became successful they became successful when booth rental started to happen it started to erode the apprentice mentorship that was going on because the owner no longer had a vested interest in, in your success you were renting a chair you were an island unto yourself so that that mentorship has really started to disappear this is my opportunity to pay forward all the mentoring that was given to me as I was growing up as a young stylist in the business there's far too many beauty school graduates and young stylists that leave the industry not because they don't love it but because they can't make a living from it and that's a travesty so this is my opportunity to share what knowledge I've gained in order to help them become successful stylists working behind the chair. post the vlog every Sunday. It's always going to have a technical how-to, uh, how to do a haircut, how to do a hair color, how to do a blow dry, how to do an upstyle. It's always going to include that, but it's also going to include the mental aspects of what it takes to be a, a success working behind the chair. I'm going to visit like hair shows, uh, some hair classes, seminars, and I'm also going to do some interviews with some really well-known people that will share with you how they became successful and what they feel is really important for your success in the hair business. First class we're going to show is a, a class I went to with Dana Louder from the main mob in Chicago and I think she does a great job so I'm just going to include a little bit of that here and then afterwards I'm going to do a technical haircut how to do a little French bob on one of my clients that came in and I did it with a razor and then we went through and point cut it check it out section for every set and now we're working on the back so again most of the things are made up but we want volume we want movement so, a couple things about updos. I'm going to share with you A, how to do them so quickly and efficiently, how long you guys look for updos. Again, keeping your clients in your chair and out of the blow dry bars, it's really important you know when their company party is. Because you guys want to see the vintage wave, I'm going to show you that on her hair, and I'm going to show you the Charlize Theron, kind of how to get that texture on straight hair on this one, right? Because you have a nice base, like we talked about having that pin cushion, you don't have to cross bobby pins or use too many. I'm just going to take some bigger sections and then I'll use my empty bin over the top to really give it that shot. I'm going to start with a natural part and then just comb everything straight down clean from both sides from the crown to the occipital bone and then from the occipital bone to the mastoid and that's going to give me the flat section in the center of the nape which is going to be my baseline which is where I'm going to start subsection that into a smaller section and then I'm going to flat blade the razor against the section and try, try to cut that as bluntly as I can I'm not worried about it being like perfect I just want to get a good solid shape in it After you finish your guideline, I'm going to take the rest of the flat section, comb it down, and then just flat blade directly on top of my previous guide and try to keep that the same length. Keeping my stroke to a minimum, I don't want to put a whole lot of internal texturizing to it. I want to keep that line as blunt and as clean as I can. combing everything down, again trying to stay directly on top of my previously cut guide. 
and then afterwards I'll take a scissor and point cut that line to give it a little bit more solidity and make that line a little bit cleaner. Next section is going to go from the drop crown to the top of the ear and then I'm going to take a pie section and hold it out at the peak curvature of the head. By holding that section at the peak curvature of the head, that's going to maintain the perfect elevation for graduation. It will prevent me from lifting it too high, which is going to cause me to round my graduation out, and it's going to become more layering, and it's going to bevel the shape, then it will give me a real solid blunt line and keep that weight into it. So the lower the elevation, the more weight you're going to have. The higher the elevation, the less weight. So the peak curvature of the head really gives me a good guide so I know exactly what sort of elevation that I'm holding it at. And I'm continuing to pivot my sections from vertical to horizontal as I work up the head. Now the last section here, everything is held at the peak curvature of the head and held down and cut directly on top of my previously cut guide same thing on the other side and here you can really see the elevation if I hold it too high the roots start to get spongy and relax if I hold it too low then it starts to curve across the head it doesn't have that same elevation and here I'm just going to subsection what I've already cut and put some internal texturizing to it to take out some of the weight her hair is real thick so this is just going to help lighten it up some continuing the same sort of sectioning I was doing underneath as I go up the head holding it down as I get closer to the front is going to give me a more solid shape around the front so I want to keep the graduation in the center of the back and as I work around to the front I'll get less and less graduation again cleaning up with the uh, scissors to point cut and make sure that that line is real solid same thing on the other side being careful and mindful of the ear so I don't get a hole there I'm not using any tension at all I'm allowing the ear to move and spring up so that I'm not compressing it which is going to then give me a hole I'm not using any tension at all when I cut the bangs I'm going to take a center section comb that straight down into my fingers and then clamp my fingers and not use any tension by pulling it with my finger and then cut my line straight across. I'll start in the center and then I'll work towards the edges as opposed to starting at one edge and cutting all the way across. I have better luck if I start in the center and then work out. Some people have better luck starting, starting from the edges and that's fine. Checking everything and making sure it has a nice swing and it's even and balanced. If you enjoyed that click subscribe below feel free to leave a comment thumbs up like share with your friends and i'll see you next week thanks